difference between you and other. The scripture speaking in Malachi chapter number 3, and if you read from verse number 10, it's 17 to 18. Bible says, uh, the time will come. Break the name of the Lord. Okay, let me read for you. It says, and they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spirit his own son that serveth him. Now, verse number 18. He said, Then shall he return and descend between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. In other words, dedication to God is one of the things that sets a life apart. When you are dedicated to God, one of the things that happens to you is that you live a different life. People could look at us and say, no, this is the, 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 the benefit of dedication. This is a proof that this life has been dedicated to God. And as God has through that dedication of purifying his life. Amen. He said, when that time comes, you will return and you will know for yourself the difference between those who serve the Lord. And those who serve not, this is to me, you cannot serve God genuinely. And God will not make you live a life different from other. When you serve God genuinely, walk in order cannot kill you. When you serve God genuinely, the economy that disrupts other cannot disrupt your progress. When you serve God genuinely, Listen to me, the battle that destroys other, that very battle will become a stepping stone to your greatness. When you serve God genuinely, when others are down, that is when God lifts you up. When you serve God genuinely, it will be so, uh, it will be so visible, it will be so clear that no, this person lives a different life, this person has been separated by God because of dedication. I pray for you today. May the reward of your dedication to God be practically seen in your life and sports in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say, may the proofs and the benefits, the reward of your dedication to God be practically seen in your life and sports in the name of Jesus Christ. If you look in any family, there is always different between those who dedicated themselves to God and those who give way one man. Maybe your parents are giving birth to six children, and maybe two of you decided to dedicate your life to God from your infancy, and you've been following God. That you it may not come immediately, but as time goes on, you will discover that there will be difference between those that serve God and those who choose not to serve God. Amen. Because those who choose not to serve God, one of the implications of it, or those who choose not to dedicate themselves to God, if they've been ladies, some of them, maybe them before they got married, they might have, uh, you know, committed a lot of abortion. Or maybe those who are men, some of them may not even go to school. Some of them just live their life carelessly. But the other thing, you are dedicated your life to God, that will be a set apart and of proofs that through this life, has been dedicated, you know, is dedicated. I've told you this story sometimes back when I was in uh, secondary school. At the beginning of uh, maybe years one, years two, years three, uh, we have our group that we always come out with the first position. And then uh, somebody must take first among us, we are about six. One will take first, one will take second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. No one, no one. Has ever broken that very, uh, you know, that record. So, as we got to SS1, this that was, uh, that were things that was this to God, they brought to us that on transfer, this to they just came, I think they came on their own, this man came on our own, this man came on our own. But unfortunately for us, those two ladies were in our class, so were the same class. With these two ladies, so ladies for them excuse. And they are not Saturday and people. They, they don't believe anybody. Always quiet, 
during the uh, break time, see them with their Bible, studying Bible, studying their book, they will be taking their juice and they will be taking their biscuit. They don't want to when you bring them, they will answer you with respect. Amen. So at the end of the time, the deposit come. And I discovered that I that normally take uh, maybe second position. These children did not just take the best second position. They, 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 they were able to convert some other people that we used to look at as some, uh, you know, some dull students. So they were able to convert those people. And then when the results come, that they take the best, they take the second. And then the people they just converted started taking thought, but for the first time, I moved from second position to the 12th position. Praise God. Then I knew something was wrong. Amen. Because those people choose to dedicate themselves to God and their lives to God. What happened? God sets them apart. These people, they can't mingle with the crowd. I must, I must make a distinction out of them. So I said, okay, maybe it's because we are not concentrating. We are not uh, concentrating. So the second time, same thing happens. When he got to the third time, we discovered that all disciples, these people, uh, were able to convert. The more our position started going up, two from position two up. By the third time, I was already getting to eighteen, and I knew if I uh, did not join this group, I would soon get to thirty-five. Praise God. So when we got to SS2, what I did as a smart person, I called Sister Bimbo and Sister Chade. The please I want you people to tell me the secret. Amen. Do you want to tell me the secret? We are the boss, we are the old guy here. So when you came, you now turn us. The dollar just turned us to a nobody. And she laughed. And as he said something, we are light. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness compressed enough. He said to me that we've dedicated our life to Christ. It is impossible for you people to outshine us. I said, okay, let's grab a two of you. What about the other people? He said, no. Any wife, any man be in Christ's name. He's a new person. Those people you people know before, they are now a changed person. And as long as they have given their life to Christ, it is impossible for you people to outshine them. I became born again, not willingly, but manipulatively, because I want to prove the, 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 the ideology, I want to prove that theory. I want to be very sure that these people, that they, what they have just told me, is the real secret. So I decided to, you know, separate myself from all my friends, and I decided to find myself a very new group of they and being born. Then when I joined them, I became very gentle that time. I will come to school early, not that you know, during break. Say, hey, let's go. No, I will stay in the classroom among those ladies. So they'll be teaching the Bible and we'll be studying. And during the exam, when we prepare for exam after school, hour, we're going to stay together. We'll hope we pray and do everything. That gentleman, ah, by the end of that term, I was able to move from position 18 and I got position 5 but my friends who still remain in their demonic dedicated life yeah, the first some of them got to 30 something here, 30 something praise God then I know that the word of God is true and pure you cannot dedicate your life to God and be at the back side of life are you hearing me today? you cannot not be dedicated to God and be disappointed in life. You cannot be dedicated to God and become a reproach in life. You cannot be dedicated to God and become a loving self in life. You cannot be dedicated to God and God will not decorate your life. I pray for us tonight as we make up our mind to rededicate ourselves to God. I see God bringing us out as gold in the name of Jesus Christ. I think somebody will shout a loudest amen. So I'm saying all this to say that dedication to God is a quality that can never be ignored. Amen.
Relation to God is a quality, is a factor that can never be ignored. Everyone knows if you are truly dedicated to God, God knows. Amen. Angel knows. You yourself, you know. The devil self knows. Friends and even your enemy will know that this person is dedicated to God. If you are fully dedicated to God, you know. God knows. Devil knows. Your family knows. Your friends know. Everybody will know. It is clearly. You cannot be that. Everybody knows that this man has been given to God. He has given his life to Christ. Hey, this one is not part of us. Even wherever you walk, wherever you go, no, 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 this one is not part of us. Because they know your life, your totality, dedicated to God. I pray for us today, as we dedicate ourselves to God, that we begin to have the reward and the benefit of that dedication in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The question tonight is, what is dedication? Amen. What? Is dedication number one it is a act that follows heart after God dedication is, is simply a act that follows act after God the heart that pants effortlessly after God the heart that pants effortlessly after God the what the scripture say Psalm 63 and verse number 8. He said, My soul followeth and after thee. Thy right hand accorded me to, to be dedicated to God is to follow high after God. Amen. To have a heart that follow high after God. That bound a blessing. In other words, you can never be tired of following God. Your desire is to please the Lord and to do His will. <laughs> you got your part in your life. We yeah, nothing mean nothing to you. You come to a point in life where materialism, where many that not that cannot make you compromise your stand, God, Amen, and your willingness to have the Lord. The one of the scriptures says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? You see, hunger, you see, persecution, you see, peril, whatsoever it is, then in all this, we are what? We are more than conqueror. Why? Because we've made up our mind. Amen. That to live, it must be Christ, and to die is day. So it's a heart that fights after God, it's a heart that follows heart after God. In other words, it's either God or God. There is nothing in between. It's either God or God. I will serve this God like that. Make sense for the Lord. I don't care what people say. I don't care what people believe. I don't care what people follow. And I don't care what gives people fortunes and all that. But as for me and my household, I've made up my mind to serve this one God. Amen. See, Joe, 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 you understand? That's what I mean to pant. You see a footballer. He's running. He's running around the feet. He's running around the face. No, he's tired. But he's still panting. He's still panting. He's panting. Because that is a goal. He's tired. He wants to score. So because of that, he's panting. You discover. Even when you play off. Okay? <laughs> you can't still wait for the boy to come. Because he's at pant. After the ball. So. God is saying, come, to be dedicated to this man, follow after God, the way footballer follow God in the field. That is how we follow. <laughs> Amen. That is how. The way the people who run, uh, really, what they run, the, eh, the, lay, right? the way they follow, they are tired. 
I saw a pant. You must have a hand that panted after the Lord. The hands that follow God. I follow hand after God. I pray for us today. May we not be discouraged following God in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter, I say, may we not be discouraged following God in the name of Jesus Christ. So to be dedicated to God means I do not need any man's. Uh, uh, I do not need any man's encouragement. I do not need anybody's appreciations or applause. All I'm doing is that I love this God and I'm sold out to Him. This is my prayer. May our passions for God increase more in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, what does it mean to be dedicated to God? What is dedication? Number two, it is a lie that is sold out to God. A dedicated life is a life sold out to God. You are literally beside yourself, God. Amen. You have been sold out, God. Bible speaking in First Corinthians chapter six and verse twenty. First Corinthians chapter six, verse twenty. Say, for ye are both with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in, in your spirit, which are God's. The God. Amen. So, to be dedicated is that you have been sold out. God, the body and God. So, whatever you do, you have to glorify God because at this very point, you now know that I am not on my own. Every part of me. Amen. It's part of the body of Christ. So in whatever I do, I should glorify God in my body. Because my body is not mine. It has been sold out to God and it's God's. They glorify God in your body with God's. So to be dedicated is that I'm sold out to God. So not to be anything. Even my life does not mean anything. I can put my life in line because of God. Because I have been bought by God. Amen. I've been sought out to God and my body, my soul and spirit are God's. But we come to that very point, we are not close to dedication. It is when people call you a fool. Why do you have to go to church every other day? Why do you have to go to church three times in a week? And you're like, oh, if I don't go to church, where else will I go? It's a question. If I don't go to church, where else should I go, or where else do you expect me to be? Amen. Because both my life and death has been sold out to him. So I've given myself to him. I've been sold out to him. So I don't, there's no better place. There's no better place that could have been done to be in the church, to be in the presence of God. Where will I go? A man of sold out myself. I see that you are jobless. Stop here. When I've been sold out. To God, amen. Is it that you are not conscious that you need to make money and you can let them know if I make the money at the end of the day, where am I taking it to? I mean, I've been sold out to God. You see, when someone is sold out to God, let me give you an example of being sold out to God. That's why you see, Pastor, who went to school, maybe they've gone into the PhD, they've gone into their, you know, they've done their master degree. Their first degree, and at the end of the day, they carry a certificate. They have used maybe, uh, maybe 10 years, 20 years to gather, they put it under a cover and carry the Bible and begin to praise God. I seen a bishop that was called a first graduate called very far back, he is been for 40 years. And when God called him, he, because he had opportunity. Had no uh, uncles who were ready to give him job. So when God called him, God said, "If you find another work, I'm, I'm I'm going to come after you. But I have to dedicate your life as certificate." To and the man said, "What can I do of these two water Brought out the gates, openly, and he set it on fire. I tell it, and he set it on fire. And people say, "Are you crazy?" Are you stupid? Whatever, whatever. Praise God. 
this man I'm talking to you is in this school right here. He's a bishop today. He's been serving God for all this year. And he had no reason to regret. Praise God. By name, so, something Samuel for Cheddar. And the girl I'm in the church is Tutu. Something that pastor. I heard the story from him. How he got all his certificate. The certificate the parents struggle to throw him to school. The certificate they had sleepless night to, to, to obtain. The certificate they had gone through tough uh, things to, 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 to come out with. And two one, not two two, not quarter to go. Amen. No fail to let my people go. Amen. A two one is said it is set it on fire. But listen to me, his life. Till now, is no lesser than any of his friends who uphold their certificate, who refuse to dedicate themselves to God, or he that dedicated his life to God from that time. They has traveled anywhere all over the world. He decided to go because God Himself separated him. I pray for us today. We will receive grace to be sold out to God and to give our totality to God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I remember in my own way when, when I was coming up and uh, you know, I just finished secondary school and by privilege I played a very, very important role in the choir and the church that for no reason should I miss evening service and choir practice. Because in the church we go, we don't do service. Week. The apostolic church, I don't know change now. It has to be morning and evening. Amen. It has to be morning and evening. When you go to church in the morning, you sing, and the Olua, more peace in life. Oh, Romi, oh, Slomi, and let me hope. Three, and the Olua. So, you, you must, you know, you must go to church in the morning, and you must go in the evening. So most time 5 a.m. we're in the church and in the evening also by 5 p.m. 5 30 we must be in the church. And then I think by technical I was employed into my business center. And what do we do? Big call those days. Right. I need any thousand men they are selling this okay at the house antenna. This one look at that, they're selling maybe 75,000. NTN came out selling 70,000. That was the first number I got as my business. So, we are actually having those who they just feel. Okay, so, even when it is business home, when they sit in your hand, they sit as a big boy. Meanwhile, you must not touch the money. Praise God. And, uh, but one thing happened that uh, every evening I would log the office. I'm going to try. So, although I make enough money for the company, but today, that is not enough. That night time, they believe that if I, sh uh, I should be in the office at those very night hours, I'm going to make more sales and all that. But we do that, we do rent uh, or rent time. So, to cut this story short, and even some people had gone to complain to my boss, my employer. But okay, this boy is a church boy. Even sometimes he's not in the, in the office. He lock himself inside his office and be playing for one hour, two hours. And so, and this happened to me. When I got there in the evening, I remember that same house. That's where we eat money for the evening. So, losing that job equals losing the 3,500 naira salary they are paying me. And also, equals to say both morning, breakfast, and dinner. So I got late that evening and they said, This is, uh, we are giving you an, uh, an option to either to go to church only Sunday from morning to 12 o'clock, open back the shop, or you resign. Ah, that would have been a temptation to me. There's no way that would be a temptation. And I said, Ma, is there anything we can do about it? Said, that is the decision of the family. That is the decision of the company. If you know you are not ready, give the key. So I didn't say, um, let, so let me go and think. I didn't say, please, I will come back tomorrow. I carried the key and I gave to them. 
And the woman said, so you mean you are fitting your future because of the church? Mean you are forfeiting your future because of church? I said to them, sir, my future is not in the business center. My future is in the church. I rather lose this very job of 3,000 naira per month and get my future right than for me to because of this and because at that very point I was seeing that job at that very point as the the plate of plate uh, of of uh, sorry, plate of body that uh, uh, what do you call that Jacob gave to Esau and he took over the bed right so I was seeing that as the place of that very foreign so and there's no way I will let go my future because of that so I willingly intentionally deliberately drop the king and two years later the same thing who collected the king because I was buried I, I they couldn't say the high something again so the next time I was appearing Like us don't have opportunity. That's why we take this walk, like do or die walk. 
Praise God. So people now, if anything happens to you where you are working now, you resign and you go to another place. If you got fired in one place, you go to another place. Are you hearing now? Now some people say, if they have problem in one church, they go to another church, that's like it twice. But we, our life is sold out here. Amen? Our life has been infested here. If anything happens to this church, it's wasted. Are you sitting now? That is why we take it like a military walk. And anyone who wants to cause any, that wants to cause problem, amen? You can physically and spiritually clear them off the way. But you do not know the level of investment that has been made. Fix the name of the Lord. I heard, you know, sometimes they go online, a man of God was telling somebody that he's up here. I will clear you out of the life. You know why the man was saying that? The man was saying that because this person in question had no just clue of the investment this man has made in his entire life. Destiny, the family, and his children, even the unborn. He has been invested, that just as the investor that has somebody come. Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to get back at you. I'm going to bring you down. I'm going to scatter what you have spent all your life to build. Eh? You will scatter it. Eh? But I have to go down. I, I can't go alone. Amen. It's like uh, it's Samson who said to God, Lord, if I'm to die with my enemy, we must die together. Uh, they will not die. I will not die. They will be alive. Let us go down. See, when you are dedicated to God, you have no quality. You have no option. Because everything, the Bible says, gain your treasure or his. That is where your heart will be. There is so many people who are not in on God and with God and in church and with church is because their investment is insignificant. There are some level of investment. No time. Amen. No resources. Everything for prayer, you invested everything in the place, and somebody is telling you, or somebody tell you, you are idiot. They are leaving the place. The investment is bad. It is it too. Are you hearing me now? Then let's take an example. If you are in an organization, in a company, and you are board of directors, or you are an investor, and maybe you have made forty percent investment into that company, and maybe you are in the meeting, and somebody says you are stupid. But because of this, I am leaving the company. Which company? The company we brought together. The company have a 40% share. I mean, 40% shareholder. If not the largest shareholder, you are telling me, go where? That's why some, some of us, we don't need encouragement for what we are doing. Amen? We don't need a club to do what we are doing. Amen? But since Cobra said, though you slay me, I will still maintain what I'm doing. I won't give up. I will continue to because my life depends on what I'm doing. But see, Paul, the apostle said, he said, it is, you know, the necessity is laid on us. And whoa! And what the world war means is either we do this work or we perish. Have no option. When you see your work with God and your relationship with God as a necessity because of the level of investment you've made. In the kingdom of God and with your relationship with God, you will not let it go for anything. Can I speak to us today? I pray that may the Lord give us a heart that pants after God, a dedicated heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So when we talk about dedication, we're talking about addiction. To be addicted to God, I can't do without it. Is the head that I breathe. Are you hearing me now? To be, to be dedicated is to be addicted. Amen. So when I'm dedicated to God, you are simply saying, I am addicted to God. I'm addicted to be addicted. And to be addicted with something means I can't do without it. Those who are addicted to smoking, without smoking. Amen. Those who are addicted to, 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 to drinking, they cannot do but drink. Those who are addicted to humanizing, they cannot do but to what to humanize. It's an addiction. Amen. And those who are addicted to reading, they cannot do and read but to read. Even when there is I can they read. So everyone is addicted. So but are urge and we are advised to be addicted to God. That's what dedicated. When we talk about dedication, another single word we're talking about consecration. 
To be consecrated means separated to, unto God. So when we talk, I'm dedicated to God, I mean, I've been separated to God. I've been consecrated. When you are consecrated to God, what others are doing that you cannot do. Not because you don't want to do it, but the necessity is laid on you. Never to do it because you have been consecrated. You have been dedicated to God. Breaks the name of the Lord. So you are not a dedicated, you are not yet a dedicated person if you can do without God. If you can still do, if you have other options outside God, you are not yet dedicated. Amen. If you can live the way everybody lives around you, you can talk the way they talk, you can sleep the way they sleep, they, you can drink the way they drink, then you are not consecrated. And that's those that are not dedicated. There are a lot of people who claim they are dedicated to God, you are not dedicated to God, you are dedicated to the church. Are you hearing me now? Or you are dedicated to somebody, maybe your leader, or your pastor, because if you are dedicated to God, what people are doing in the world can be beyond church, sir. Dedication is beyond church. Consecration is beyond church. Amen. You have been separated from God. You become like a uh, Enoch. You have been dedicated to God. You are separated to God. It's beyond church. It's beyond group. It's beyond pastor. It is now you and God. It's like Joseph saying, how can I do such evil and see God? You know what? Nobody was there. Amen. A typical normal woman being, they will chop and claim out. Amen. Because chopping that kind of food, it attracts temporal promotion. Praise God. Enjoyment. Because you will no longer be eating the normal food or serving you. Amen. My dad will cook your food and you will eat on the table of the king, on king's table. But I had to let go. It looks like opportunity. It, it looks so uh, uh, enticing. But the truth about it is this. How can I do this? A man that has been consecrated and that is dedicated to God. How can I do something thing and sin against that God? So, it's not all about what you do. Church, it's not about what you do in your group. It's all about what you do when no one is there. Are you hearing me here? Dedication is not about what you do in the public, but it's what you do in the secret where no one monitors you, where no one sees you, where no one will be there to rebuke you or question you, where no one will be there to give the burden on you. No one is there, but you are doing it. That's dedication. Dedication is what you say when no one is there. Are you hearing me now? Your reaction to issues where no one is there. That's what we call dedication. Because a consecrated person, both in the public or in the secret, will remain consecrated. If you hear me, say, I hear you, Pastor. They will receive that very grace to be consecrated to God in the name of Jesus Christ. When we talk about uh, dedication also, what comes to your mind, you must also remember devotion. Amen. When we talk about dedication, another word that is synonymous to that, amen, is the word devotion. To be devoted means to be committed to God. Amen. To be committed to God. So to be dedicated, to be devoted, and to be committed is the same. To are committed to something. And to be committed to something means to give it your all. Hello. To be devoted to something means I give it my what? My heart. In other words, I reserve nothing behind. I, I give it my energy. The best of me is what I'm giving it. And that is what devotion is all about. It's what submission is all about. I mean, that, uh, uh, you know, devotion is all about. And also, what dedication also connotes uh, submission. Submission. That is absolutely surrendered to God. To be absolutely surrendered to God. Submit yourself to God. Not take any, any part. But when you are dedicated, including your money, your body, your, your, your resources, everything, you are under the submission. You are submitted to Him. Amen. And when we talk about dedication, also, remember, it also connotes donation. To be dedicated means. I, I donate this. Is that right? When someone says, I dedicate this sticker to God, what is the person saying? 
I donated to God. Are you hearing me? When someone said, on behalf of me and my family, we are dedicating this hope to God. The meaning of that is, on behalf of my family, we are donating the speak of God. So the meaning of that is, when you are dedicated, in other words, you have been donated to God. You have, been, you have given yourself as a point of friend to whatever I want to do. Listen to me, when you are totally, uh, uh, you know, devoted, Amen. Or when, or when you donate yourself and dedicate, dedicate yourself to God, it will be no longer have your own job. The problem we have in this day is that a lot of people claim they are dedicated to God, but they are not. Uh, they've not donated their life to God. I remember some, some years back, I had some group of pastors who come. I told people, problem where though they came one, no one came first, and he came to my office. Said, that was in my revelation. I saw, saw you, and I saw a white dove, and I heard the voice say, "This is Enoch, my son, in whom I'm well pleased. Go and serve him for the rest of your life." I was just coming to back. We are not even up to six months. We are not even up to twenty members. And I said, "For your life." I said, "But we don't need pastor. No man went on his thing and said, Christ, sir." The Lord said, if I need to hear, in three days I will die. Hey, good Lord. Come and look in your door. Hey, they claim dedication, but they don't be totally given themselves to that. So he was doing to me to the only point that the Lord said to me, never you see that. Amen. That is under two weeks, he brought one of his friends again. That one has about five children. Amen. On top of a church that we are not even to turn to. Praise God. And that one was working with Charlatan as a cleaner. When he came, he also lay down. And he go and go, their mouth. They made me very sweet. So I saw me and you in a private jet. We were flying and we landed in, in Austin and we were in the front and I was behind. But I said, okay, you can be, can be going, but I'm pastors. After a while, we're going to get you. So I heard the Lord saying, I should be my job now or I will die. The Lord, why are you sending people that will die to me? Amen. Why are you sending people that will die to me? Oh, so agile, ready to do anything. First one, I said, Okay, you're going to preach. If a child became, I'm going to preach on what I call faith suicide. They would try to be faith suicide again. He, I didn't know that he was adding a joke with English. And he said, It was faith suicide that made me to resign my job. And he did all this. So the first one I gave the Lord said, First thing, to oh, show. Sure. I just told him, I said, oh, The Lord said, I should transfer you. Going to Lambata, when he get laugh, and I, I gave him transport. Went to our church in Lambata. When he saw the church, he came back. As he was coming back, the Monday that followed, I couldn't see him. Anymore. The Tuesday, as he was coming, he would the mission letter. Say God told him <laughs> he should resign. God, the same God that said you will die in three days, the God has changed his mind. Hey. Listen to me, one who is truly dedicated, devoted to mercy, and at the same time, who has donated himself unto the Lord, such a person of no job. Are you hearing me? As I am here today, if the Lord is saying, you know, live here now. We just come tomorrow, we discover that, man, I'm already making a little bit of get off here. But I have nothing to take behind. That's not what I'm to look behind. Because he that brought me here, say, move. And I've dedicated myself to him. I've given him my all. So what else will I keep behind? Listen to me. It takes true dedication for one to act. When the devil was in Kaduna, the Lord said to my son, arise, say to him, arise and move to Lagos. If he has said, Lord, what am I keeping about? He should have only 3,000 people there. Where are my people from? Where will they, where will they go? Second day in the morning, phew, take his back and see what he has become today. He has become a nation on his soul simply because of 
the true dedication, the, uh, uh, the proven dedication. You can be dedicated to God and take yourself to Him, and it will not change your life in due course. My word for you this day, as you give your heart to God, may you never be less in the name of Jesus Christ. And let's just we talk about this, but dedication also, we should talk about the word affection. Amen. In other words, to be dedicated means, so I said, I'm dedicating myself to you, you have to have conquered my heart. I have affection for you. Amen. When the man is dedicated to his wife, the wife has conquered what? His affection. Are you hearing me now? When a woman is dedicated to her husband, the husband as well has conquered her affection. There are a lot of us today who claim our life has been dedicated to God, but our affection has not been conquered by God. God has not conquered our affection. We, we treat God like a common person. Treat God anyhow. Let me quickly say this to you today. May our heart preach after God daily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I think somebody will shout the loudest, Amen. Now let me say this before I leave this very point that everything man needs on that God is made possible by the buoyancy of our dedication to God. Do you want anointing? Just dedicate yourself to God and then it will come. I can tell you for free. Amen. By God's grace, I'm one of the proof that dedication to God pays. You cannot be dedicated to God and be less in life. You cannot be dedicated to God and become a non-entity. You cannot be dedicated to God and be disadvantaged in life. God knows how much I gave him all. Oh. Praise God. Everything all. Everything that enters to my account to go back to God immediately. Go back to God. Amen. Everything I have is challenged towards God. My daily life is God first, God second, God third, God fourth, God fifth, God and God. God knows. Amen. God knows that life means nothing to me. Amen. Acquisition of material things means nothing to me. Because I've known that one day both the rich and the poor will die. The greatest investment any man can ever make is to be dedicated to the cause of God. And when you make some decision, listen to me, it will be, uh, it will be, uh, it, it will be, uh, it will produce benefits for you, both in this life and in eternity. I pray for us today, the grace to maximize our relationship with God through dedication. That grace is released in the name of Jesus Christ. And briefly, as we begin to wrap up, what are the proofs of dedication? What are the proofs? What are the things people we see as a Christian? And they will be able to say without being said, whether this one they are dedicated to God. This one has given his all or our all to God. What are the proofs? Number one. The proof that you have been dedicated to God is that love for his person and his presence. Amen. Love for the person of God and the presence of God. Let's go back to that Psalm 63 verse 1 and then we drop to verse 8. He said what he says. He said, Oh God, thou art my God, heavenly will I seek thee. My soul takes them for thee, my flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and texting land, we know what that is. Verse number eight. Amen. And he said, My soul follow it after thee, that right hand of all that thing. Listen to me, that word looks so, it sounds so emotional. Are you hearing me now? Sounds so what? Emotional. It's very, very emotional. So, maybe you have a fiancé and you want to propose to her. Just go and meet her. Amen. Go back to verse 1. Amen. 
Imagine, it's so emotional. I say, oh my darling. Hey, amen. You are my love. Only will I see thee. Amen. I so tested for thee. My flesh longer is for thee. Eh? Eh? Are you hearing me? Now you come get for thee. In a dry and a testy land where there is no water. Now go to verse 8. And you continue telling her. Amen. Or you are telling him. Maybe you are telling your husband or your wife. My soul follow it up after thee. Thy right hand of Odin. I just want you to hold me with your right hand. My soul follow it hard. Now you see how, how affectionate, emotional the word like. Praise the for the Lord. That is how someone who loves God and God's presence, that's how they speak. Sir, when you are dedicated to God, it's beyond give and take. It just will not become emotional. Am I communicating somebody here? You can put God in the mood, even when God is not in the mood. But you love God. <laughs> Praise God. I've told you many times. And when you love God, and you, you, you love his presence, you love his presence. Amen. You just want, I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, the more I want to know who he is. The more of you. In other words, who are romance God. Are you hearing me here? Someone say romance. I'm calling it only romance, spiritual romance. When you come to God's presence, it is no longer for what you can get of Him. It's no longer of what you can, or the blessings you are looking for. We were no longer talking about, oh Lord, die, die, die. No, 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 no. We're not talking of any of such. You just come to God's presence because you just love His person and His what? Love His person <laughs> and His presence. You just want to remain there. You want to, you are lost in His presence. You have spent 10 hours in the presence of God and you are not aware of it. You, you just want to be there more. And, and it become emotional that when you are not in God's presence, something is missing in you. At that very point, no one encourages you to go to church. No one will ask for you. No one will send you a text message you should come to the church. That is this feeling that makes you to miss God. Hello. Are you hearing me? Have you ever missed God before and you miss His presence? It's different between missing church. Missing church is different from missing the presence of God. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, sometimes, maybe because of too much activities and I'm not taking my time to spend a long time in God's presence, I will let God whisper to me, Enoch, I miss your presence. I miss fellowship. I, I just want to. I miss a fellowship with you. I want to fellowship with you. Imagine what it's not look at me now missing God. Even God is missing me. Am I complicating it? Yeah. You must grow to that very level. That is dedication. Where you develop a relationship with God to the very point that it becomes so em become emotionally attached to God. Is when you, when you don't see God, you are looking for God. And when God is, when, when God cannot find you, God is himself is looking for you. And God is saying, come, I just I have to talk. I want to talk to you. And at that very point, I have to respect myself and look at the place and lock myself. I'm just here. Amen. And at that very point, nothing like that. Nothing like, Lord, I need money. Nothing like, oh, every enemy in my father's house. No. At this very point, it's all about worshiping him. Amen. You make my life so beautiful. And as you are. You are, don't sing with me. You have made me here on heart. There is nothing greater than this. That's why I love you forevermore. I want more of you. I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, is the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. The Holy Spirit, it's like a love prayer. Eh? It's a love prayer. I just, I just, it's a romance. Are you hearing me here? It's a proof of our dedication to God. 
when it's beyond bread and water, when it's beyond give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, that is the time you are now showing your dedication. You hear me? There are people in the church just for what they can benefit. There are people who pray only for what they can benefit. The reason why they can't be in the church on Thursday is because they don't follow relationship with God. They don't follow it. There is no love for God. There is no love for His presence. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Bible speaking in Mark chapter 12. Of verse 29 and 30. Mark 12, 29 and 30. And Jesus answered him, The voice of all the commandment is here. O Israel, the Lord, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first. Amen. Listen to me. Love is love. Somebody say love is love. Is that loving God or loving man or loving man? Love is love. Love God the way you will love somebody you love. Love God the way you will love your husband, if not more. Love God the way you will love your wife, if not tomorrow. Love is what is love. There is no two kind of love. Love is what? Love is love. Well, it is a genuine love. Praise God. I pray for you today. And you receive grace to love God more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number two, Amen. The proof, proofs of love of I mean of dedication. Number two, you must love. You must have love for His company in prayer. Amen. You must have love His company. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 27. Genesis 19 and verse number 27. Bible said, And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Are you see that? Abraham stand up in the morning and we go to the place where he always stands early in the morning before the Lord. Listen to me. You cannot tell me you are dedicated to God when you lack water. Spray your water. Are you, are you hearing? There are people who have no prayer water. Their house is as, is as casual as casualty. Are you hearing? In fact, their house is a dead to witches and wizards because there is no fire. There's no fire in the house. That, that, that there's no any sort of angelic visitation. The only prayer that even a goat in the house can pray is our Father who art in heaven. Hello, be your name, the kingdom come. That we may not have to give us today our because they like food naturally. If you say you are dedicated to your dedication is shown by how much you love to keep company with God in prayer. How much you love? Say you are, you are a teacher to God or you are doing things of God. Then yeah, you are prayerless, careless. Amen. You are carelessly what? Prayerless. No prayer. You don't have a prayer order. You can wake up in the, in the night just to keep to be in the company of God. Listen to me. Stop making noise when there are traffic jam. Your life will begin to have of a hit, you know. Are you yeah. If you want to journey to heaven, journey when the traffic is light. Let me tell you something. If after this service, I will be going to my chama, even not uh ocean, where it's uh, you know maraba, all this I see from here. If I take off by 10 p.m., the another 35 minutes, I'll be in Goshen. I've tried from my house to Goshen less than 30 minutes, I was in Goshen. Because the traffic is very light. But if you want to see the danger, on that axis, 
This year, around four p.m., I'll be going to Goshen. I can tell you that you will get to Goshen by eight thirty in the night because you will see traffic jam. Let me say this to you: if you want to get for cheaply, always approach him when the traffic is light. Amen. It takes discipline for somebody to wake up in the night and pray. It takes sacrifice for somebody to keep company with God at night. So it's only a few people that does that. Hello? I wish to talk it together. It's only a few people that does that. So if you want to be among those light traffickers, then you have to know how to wake up and keep company with God in prayers. Praise the name of the Lord. It is sex of irresponsibility for you to leave your night hour and you get to a place you were employed to work in the morning and then but now you say five why one hour and be speaking and talking in your office now God I'm praying for you to me may you not work with somebody like me there's a time to pray and a time to work if you pray when you should be working I fire you and if you come meet me, says, uh, if I because I normally pray my office, I will ask you, what time do you pray? Am I coming to somebody? What time do you pray? Must you, somebody employ you to walk, and you have to listen, walk by head to clock. And it's not a church walk like this, that, okay, we have morning devotion, afternoon devotion, we pray. You have been a set job. And then, you're supposed to be doing office work. Close your door. And you're saying, aka day, aka day, you have to, day call. They see, they will fire you and God will not punish them. They because you show how much you are irresponsible. Amen. You that become a hypocritical. You just want to do for people to know that you are spiritual. You are not spiritual. You are nothing. The ritual people know how to touch God and keep the conflict of God at night. They wake up as a lion. Ready to defy any devil. Shaka Bulala. A betu ke paradu asha. A gete ge, a gete guapa. Listen to me. Those who are dedicated to God in the place of prayer, they are ever ready to fight any battle. They have fought fire at night to discharge fire in the daytime. You hear what I'm saying? Every time I start there for cancer, I do not need to pray five minute prayer before I sit down. I, 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 I don't pray at all. I feel the prayer. So when I come, this uh, 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 the Father in the name of Jesus, uh, this and this and the other, open my eyes to see. Before I will open my eyes to see, pow, I've seen it from the beginning to the end. I can be told tell the person what will happen to him in the next 100 years if he will be alive. I was a pastor, how do you get it within one minute? How will I not get it? The fire that has been absorbed. In the place of prayer at night, it's too much, amen, for the service of the day. But there are people who sleep heavy and they woke up heavy, waking up with the demon from their father's house. They are carrying on everywhere, but their life has been made messed up. Are you hearing me here? Anyone who sleep too much will suffer too much. Anyone who knows how to keep company with God in the place of a dedicated, you know, a dedicated prayer, thought a person will live a lighter life and we have access to God. God is so far. It is us that we find it difficult to seek Him. Say, He that seek me, he will do what? Find me. Abraham will always go early in the morning. We got up very early. Go in the morning to that very place. The Holy Spirit is God. Do you have any place of where you meet with God? Do you have a place? And how about this happens you right? A Muslim. Oh God. God help our generation. And how about this happens you right? Even this compact. A Muslim will build three bedroom flats and build a mosque by the side as an altar. That is the place he wakes up to meet his God. You as a Christian, where do you meet your God? They want to 
stomach Nigeria. How would they not stomach Nigeria? Do we pray the way they pray? Do we sacrifice the way? Are we dedicated the way they are dedicated to God? Amen. How many of us today have built a house and we make a provision for chapel? Amen. To build a house and in that house that is a provision for what? A chapel. Where people could come from around or people in your house and they would come and preach to everybody and people so that this is you. So I've been also that puts up out of you. But a most people building his own house. A mosque by the side. Then around 435, say Allah. Now you are now complaining that is disturbing your sleep. Why can't you also build your own chapel in the house? If you see 10 houses owned by a Muslim, I can bet you out of 10. There are six of them with a mosque inside. Am I speaking to somebody here? What? You will not see chapel inside the church of them. You will not find chapel inside the of them. Why? That is to show how much. And how little you are dedicated to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me quickly rush. Maybe I can give you two more. You cannot be able to run wrap up. Number three. Amen. Love for his word. The proof of dedication is that we have love for his word. We are in a generation today that pay less attention to the word of God. We, we, we are, we, we show more love for the, 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 the gimmicks, the manipulation, amen, unprophetic prophecies. That's what we can be taught, disease. Because somebody carry leg up, hey, I will cause trouble. I will go, hey, I can see such a they are not saying anything. Are you hearing me today? Say me. What a robber sleep at. Dalamier to a place. Hey! I see poverty follow you. They know because they address you based on how you dress. You look like better wear those songs. Hear me again. But listen to me. The Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. O Lord, word is what? It's settled. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Bible speaking. In John 15, 14, verse 15, he says, If you love me, keep my commandment, keep my word. Are you hearing me today? Keep my word. Now let's read this very fine scripture. Jeremiah chapter 15, and verse 16. Jeremiah 15 and 16. Thy word will find. I find your word. <laughs> I find your word. I want to happen. He said, And I did it. The word of God is to be true. Am I dead to hit the wall? Are you hearing me here? Amen. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. I found your word, I eat your word, and your word become a joy to me and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O oh Lord God of Israel. Have you found the word of God? Have you eaten the word of God? And has the word of God brought joy in your life? Somebody shout hallelujah. Listen to me. There is something you will see in that Bible. Hey, that will change your prayer points. Are you hearing me? The Bible in your hand. There is something God will show you inside that Bible. There is something you will find in the Bible. You will hit it. You will forget your pain. You will forget your problem. I read the book of Kenneth E. Hedges on his sick bed, who had become in the ability and at his vegetable stage. He got to the Bible and he read uh, Mark chapter 10, or is it chapter 10 or 11, verse 28, 24 downward, where he said, If you will say it with your mouth, without doubt in your heart, then whatever you say, that is what you will say. 
said the moment he saw that scroll, you mean that if I will say it without, without doubt in my heart, in my, in my heart, whatever I said, when they were coming to carry the money, here you see, he stood, walking to meet the mom. Ah, what happened? I said, I am healed. And that was the last time he ever, you know, find himself on the sick bed because he found the word. He hates the word until the word become joy unto him and rejoice it. So, uh, listen to me. No after love for God. Hmm. Is equal not loving your whole life. Not loving, not having love for the word of God is equal loving yourself. It's like hatred. No. I hate it. Joking about he, he, every prayer prayed in ignorance can never be effective. Hey, oh yeah, die. Hey, ah. in ignorance. But so your heart all is safe. Why? It's not because I cannot hear you or because you have a base. Far too hard. If you have a book, a right is able to answer you in five minutes. Are you hearing me here? One of the gifts God gives to me is the gift of answer prayer. And I'm not the man of many gifts, but one thing I'm sure if I pray, he hears. How do I come to that? Amen. I have found the word. I it, it, it has become a joy to me. But can make you cry that the same thing we don't shout anything because find the word. Listen to me, that is a word meant for you. You must find that word. When you find the word, eat it. It will give you joy. You cannot be addicted to the word of God and die of depression. You cannot be addicted to the word of God and die of frustration. You cannot be addicted to the word of God and you will be confused in life. I find the word. I hate the word. And the word becomes a joy to me. Have you found the word? Do you even know the word of hearing God's word? Why are people not in the church every other Thursday? But they know Thursday service, talkative service. Pastor will just come and talk, 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 and share the grace. No, oh, the name of Jesus. You, I see you. I see. Uh, this is this is this is it. Don't be deceitful. Amen. Prophecy can be aborted. You are not hearing me. Prophecy can be what? Aborted. No, prophecy can be frustrated. No, prophecy can be forfeited. But the Bible says, "Forever, O Lord, Thy word." It's a sure word. It's a certain word. The Bible says we have one, we have a word of prophecy, a better word. Amen. The word of God is a prophecy from God, written, not the diluted one from men. Telling you, come here. Say to me, matter, say matter, you are mindful of many things, but one thing is faithful, and that thing is to sit at the master's, you know, feet to hear the word. I am telling you, take this word serious. Take those days of it serious. Find the word. Eat this word. Let the word enter you. When the word becomes flesh, you become a walking Bible. And the Bible begins to work in your life. I communicate to somebody here. This is my word for you. May your love for the word of God increase in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I give us two more briefly and then I'm going to close. Amen. Love for his house. Amen. You must have love for the house of God. The Bible speaking in Psalm 1, 1, 1 2, 2, verse 1, say, I was glad when they say, let's go to the house of God. You must have the love for the house of God. Love for the house of God. Love coming to church. Because, oh, now today, today is Thursday again. First we go to church. Today is Thursday again. Today is Sunday again. I was glad when they say, Let's go to the house of God. Why? Because in his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasure forevermore. Somebody shout hallelujah. And finally, when you are dedicated, 
He will love to give to his cause. But you are dedicated. Nobody will force you to give. You will give. Amen. Some people can waste money, but they cannot give it to God. Because they believe they are giving it to pastor. Amen. That is the greatest deception of the devil. They can waste money, but they can't pay their time. They can waste money, but they cannot give in the church. And they say, the church is the money, pastor. Hey, stop. May God give you access. Church money and church finance. And you will now know that church, amen, at the beginning, is never a lucrative business. Except you want to manipulate. Praise God. As it stands today, every Sunday, amen, our expenditure alone is about 100,000 euros more. Pay for the buses, amen, talk about diesel, talk about cheer, talk about things, we talk about all kinds of things. That is on to run the church every Sunday. Amen. And may the Lord give that sense, teach us offering at the end of the service, and they will tell you that uh, and we still need more money to complete, to complement the work we have done. Then you will know that it is not a lucrative business. Maybe later, when the church becomes very massive and big, but listen to me too, what is giving? What is this? And I'm talking to you now that some churches who have closed their weekly activity because of. Issue. <laughs> but they will not come and go and give themselves. But I cannot, they are only generation now. If the generation should go for one hour, I can bet you that we have spent 20,000 bucks of this. Praise God. Then after the service, now let us pour the offer on the ground. Let us count it together. <laughs> Amen. No my person, not a church worker, not a decay. Can't the money. We now discover that my mouth, if you take a, a, a it cannot even buy the diesel. Take lots of take bills, pay all kinds of bills to pay. Monthly had no one in daily. And you are saying now, listen to me, that's just how much you are dedicated to God. Bible says, where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be. The reason why your depression does not go to God is because your heart is far from God. Are you hearing me now? Your heart is far from God. Except you want to manipulate. If you come to the church every blessed day, okay, come and touch this altar. You got 1,000. Come and touch. So you'll be happy. Don't be and be, I'm, I'm be touching the altar. But we come to the church, we preach normal preaching like a gentle people that we have. And we share the grace everybody go. You are not, you are not happy that you are not under pressure. That you are obligated as an obligation. If you love the Lord and are dedicated to God, you must contribute to the propagation of the gospel. I pray for us today. May our dedication to God increase daily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shall we rise to our feet and begin to appreciate God tonight for the word of life, the word of hope that we've received.